We always want to do things too fast. Everybody, there's not a human on this planet that doesn't want to take something and go faster with it because we understand what it should be. But to actually control it, you know, and teach our muscles to do what it's supposed to be the right way takes discipline. And that's when a lot of people give up. People give up because they have this understanding, but they can't do it. Welcome back to the drum show. I'm really excited about today because I get to have uh, an old uh, a teacher. Not old. I don't want to start off calling you old, old now. Look at that. Old. See, he was Let's about to stop old. me. <laughs> he was about to say, hold up. I'm not doing this. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> we're done. So I, I, I've known Dr. John Wooten now. Um, oh, gosh, since I was in high school, when I, I went to high school in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and he was there at the University of Southern Mississippi. And I wound up actually before we knew each other, I was um, reffing his son in soccer when he was playing guy i guess drew would have been like six maybe five or six i remember having to tell kids you know you can't jump on top of the soccer ball that's not legal uh you know so they were they were pretty small and then i wound up um going to the university of southern mississippi and studying under dr wooten for about a year and a half before i left for new orleans for about two and a half three years and then i came back and uh, accosted the facilities again and, and made him teach me again. And so I guess, I guess you, I guess you were, you, were, I was there almost five years total. Yeah. yeah and about, um, yeah. we got to, we got to play a lot together uh, in different groups he had and different ensembles in, in college. And now it's been a, it's been a real privilege to get to, to be a, a, I don't want to call myself a fellow pro professional on the same level, but at least in the same play and field, maybe in the same, in the same, in the same ball field. So, uh, Dr. Wooten, welcome, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, the old Dr. Wooten. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, I am man. I'm 61 now, so I, I you know, you're 61. Hold up, 61. you don't look, you don't look 61, man. You know, I'm 61. How? I mean, how long ago did you study with me? That was. What year was that? Like, yeah, you know, man, I got two. Would have been two thousand. Yeah, two thousands when I started. Yeah, uh huh. Start so two thousand to two thousand five. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, well, you know, that was that was twenty five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so we do get older. Um, and and yes, you can say you're you're. We are colleagues now. Uh oh. Okay. I I'd say so. I mean, I'm man. Look, one of my my no one of my 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 biggest uh pride the thing i'm most proud of is is my former students and uh the things y'all are doing you know you guys are i got several people that are just kicking ass but yeah. everybody, everybody doing really well in their own right so well, how, how long you've been teaching there 32 this is my 33rd year so how many people you had come through the program uh, do you no know idea yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. But but everybody's doing well. Either they're band directors or they've gone on and done, you know, several people doing really big things like yourself. And, you know, like uh, we have four students, four former students in the old guard, drum and fife corps, two in the mm -hmm. Hellcats. Yeah. Uh, is Scott, is Scott, is Scott uh, Jameson still, still in the old guard? Scott, Scott Jameson is still in the old guard. David Vernon. You remember David? Mm-hmm. In school with him and a couple newer ones so danny wells and then uh now michael maroney wow i didn't know that, i didn't know two more had gotten in yeah and then just recently just this last year jeff prosperi jr and uh jack bounds won the auditions for the hellcats wow that's amazing yeah. Yeah. that's amazing and then, yeah then we got people like enrique you know went and he, he's Burton. still in he's i i, I talked to him last year we went through uh, actually in Colorado where he was, but he couldn't make it out to the show. We didn't get a chance yeah. to hook up. Um, I yeah. think he was playing that night. Uh, he's, does yeah, he still, yeah. he's, he's got his drum school there in Colorado now, huh? Yeah. He's got a drum school, online school drum. Uh, yeah. He's super mm -hmm. busy. Uh, yeah. For everybody in Henrique taught, uh, he, he was at Henrique is actually who I took from in high school. And my first lesson, I don't know if I ever told you this, but my first lesson, cause Joseph Britton got me in with Henrique and Henrique didn't take high schoolers. He didn't teach him. Yeah. And so Joseph said, look, make an exception. He'll, he'll do this. So I came in. The first thing Henrique said to me, I walked in and I said, hey. And he said, look, I'm doing this as a favor to Joseph. I don't take high schoolers. So if you don't practice, you're out. <laughs> and I said, uh, okay, 
my name's Steven. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's good to meet you, <laughs> you know. So that was my uh, introduction. Henry uh, taught at Berkeley for a while and um, played with Fusion Great Wayne Noss, and, and uh, he's a killer player. Um, killer player. Yeah, yeah, when he yeah. came. When he came to Southern Miss, all he did was drum set. I mean, that's all he played. I said, well, you know, if you come here, you're going to have to do some other things. <laughs> and and he, he was into it, but some of it he went kicking and screaming, you know, yeah. playing marimba, yeah. vibraphone, timpani. Look, I, I get it. I went kicking and screaming. I refused to play timpani while I was there. I went kicking well, and screaming. Well, we, we need to talk about when you started here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. That's a good story. I mean, I, I tell this story because, you know, I use, you know, the, the, the saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Uh -huh. You, your, your, your photo comes up in that <laughs> quote, because when you walked in my office to audition, look, look, y'all, Stephen had, <laughs> he had a colored head and his hair was the color is white and black, like a soccer ball. And yeah. he had earrings all up and down his ear. I had, a, I had a lip ring at that time, too. A lip ring. Man, he was tough looking. Like, like he walks in my office, he goes, hey, I'd like to audition. And I'll, I'll turn around and I go, what just walked <laughs> into my office? For Circus Olay, what are you auditioning for, you know? So, so I, right away I said, John, don't, don't judge a book by its cover. You don't know what, and and I'm glad I didn't because you you well you 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 started the audition played snare drum pretty well played drum set really well we got behind the keyboard oh man that was I tell I tell that story all the time yeah uh, well, he go said ahead. he said he said walk over there you know I had to audition on snare drum drum set I tested uh, proficient in drum set somewhat deficient in snare drum studies, which I didn't surprise me, but I did, I, I did fine, like, you know, and, um, and I wasn't a great sight reader with snare drum music. Right. And then, um, and then he said, all right, well, if you could go over there to that marimba and play what's on the page. And I thought, oh, well, this'll be, you know, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I, I didn't have any tonal background. And yeah. so instead of just telling him, hey, I don't, uh, I don't do that, you know, and uh, I, I'm like, ah, there's a chance I could hit the right note, like right? <laughs> eternal optimist. So I walk up and it's big whole notes, big whole notes, right? And I pick up the mallets and I think, all right, well, here it goes. And I hit one note and I hear, thank you. That's all I need to hear. <laughs> and that was, wrong I, note. Thought, I thought, there it is. All right. <laughs> I'm getting in here. <laughs> yeah. But you know what, what I remember from that? audition is you know talking to you afterwards and just um you know i and i tell this to people all the time somebody i, I teach this one guy online an older man who's you know he's a beginner and he goes he goes i he goes i just figure i'm your worst student ever i said no you're actually a really good student he goes what i said well i mean what i mean by good is you're you're a good student mm -hmm. and a good player that's no, but a good student, you're a good student, you're very interested and you're concerned and you practice. And when I tell you stuff, you listen and you actually go and do it. And it, you know, anytime I have a student that works hard and doesn't matter where they start, I've taught total beginners and I've taught the best snare drummers in the world. And sometimes the best snare drummers in the world are the worst students. Because mm -hmm. uh, if they, or at least if they think they're the best in the, you know, then they got nothing to learn. You got to have the capacity for learning. So uh, what makes me a good teacher is a good student. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so, and, I, and, and you, you, you were hungry and I could tell you were hungry and you saw, and I think we had the same conversation uh, about, okay, well, you got to do this or you're out, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, and you told me, you said, look, you, you, you may want to look at, a, at majoring in something else because you're pretty far behind and stuff. And you're going to have to work a lot to catch up with where some of these guys are coming in. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and that was a good thing to, you know, to say to me. It wasn't a no. It was just a, you know, 
uh, you, you, you're going to have a lot of work to swim because I kind of went out of there with a chip on my shoulder and I was like, no, I'll, I'll, I'll show everybody. I'm, I'm, I could be here, you know? And, um, but yeah, I started so behind, uh, yeah. from, from where a lot of players came in. Yeah. And I saw that, I saw that in your attitude and that's why I accepted you. And then you continued. So you caught up and you, you know, passed people up and, and you had the drive, you had a drive that, you know, it was incredible. So yeah. yeah, with that, if you have that kind of drive and that kind of thirst and hunger for learning, man, you're going to, you're going to be successful. I don't care who you are. You're going to, you're going to do great. Uh, you're going to be satisfied with what you are. Whether you, I don't know about being the best or any of that stuff. It's just, you gotta, ha you gotta be able to grow. You know, it's like you you were like good soil, you yeah. know, you could almost use that analogy of, you know, if you grow, if you grow, which we do in our backyard, there's certain areas of the backyard that the, the soil's better, you know, and if there's good soil, it's going to grow. If it's, if it's not, it's, it's not, it's not going to grow. So, you know, two things, first of all, I got to, you know, when I, when I, uh, accept students, I want students like yourself that are hungry and have good attitudes. I've turned away a lot of really good players because they had the wrong attitude. They felt like they were coming to school to do me a favor. You know, it's, in fact, this happened recently. Like I'm here, man, you're so lucky to have me as a student. I'm going, hmm? This, <laughs> we, we, I think they think this is uh, backwards. So, and what that does is it breaks down the environment, the learning environment for all the other students. Mm -hmm. So I got the, uh, I think the, the, most important thing I have at the university, the, the, the one thing I really need to do, people say you're a good teacher. I said, well, I'm a good, I'm, I have good students. Mm -hmm. So to be a good teacher, you have to have good students and you have to have a good environment. Yeah, and I, and I think it's important, you know, the, the environment's really important in the community. Um, you know, I tell people that all the time when they're talking about, hey, I think I wanna, play for a living, I think I want to go on the road, I think I want to, and I say, look, you know, the playing is a very, once you pass a certain level, it's, you, if you walk into a session, maybe here in Nashville, if you walk into a session and you've been hired, it is expected that you can do the job. You were hired. So that's a given. Nobody is actually questioning that. And if that comes up in question, you're not asked back, right? So that's got to be a given. The playing has to be, has to be there. You know, and, and, and then the rest of it, the other 95, 99 percent of it sometimes is your people skills, how you interact with everyone. How, are you able to take criticism? Are you able to take instruction? Are you able to take feedback? You know, how can you all of those things that go into being a professional musician or a professional in any field really um, is is being able to listen, being able to be a good person, uh, not be a miserable hang. You know, and I'm I, I'm not always perfect at that, but I tell people, look, I've gotten asked back a lot of times because I go in and as soon as we're done with the first show, I'm in their ear. I'm like, hey, what went well? What, what do we need to improve on? Man, thanks. You know, thanks for the call. I appreciate that. I'm always following up. I'm always trying to 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 be an, a good addition to whatever community I'm a part of and the community we have in my online drum school. Uh, I tell Grant and I talk about it a lot. You know, if I send out an email and somebody gets offended because at the end of my email, maybe I say, God bless. I had somebody, I mean, they, they read me the riot act. And, and I said, well, this is good because they're not a good fit for our community. And I said, you don't have to, you don't have to have any religion to be in our community. I could care less, but you have to have a respect for others that you're okay with what they believe. You're okay with what this one believes. And we'll keep the conversation around music and be respectful of each other. Um, and so a lot of times whenever we have kind of that bad apple that gets in the community, they get dug out real quick. I'll be the first yeah. to be like, Hey, you gotta go. You gotta go. You can't act like that in here. You know? Yeah. And I assume it would be the same way with, the with the community you built there. Exact same thing. Uh, yeah. And we're, you know, we're talking about the same thing. And by the way, you're a, you're a great example for this, for what you're talking about. And there's certain things I can't teach. Well, you know, the, I always say the best way to teach is by example. And the mm -hmm. best way to learn is by imitating. And we teach every day 
not just music. I mean, I, I feel like my job a lot of the time is, is you know, head, head philosopher and, mm Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 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 Mm -
I tell them, I'm like, look, I can only teach the paradiddle so well. Like I can only present right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left to you in so many different ways before we have to start dealing with like, what's the hang up here? Why aren't you getting that? And so many times their blocks um, come from, you know, an inconsistency in their practice time, their life's kind of out of control and they can't put the time aside to do it. Maybe they're always in their head and they're negative about, you know, their practice time. It, it's all of these things that combine that we kind of have to start pulling the threads on to figure out what's the matter. Or, or a big classic example is I, I had a lady come in. I get people tell me this all the time. And she came in and she said, I can't play this song. And I said, well, I don't believe that. I said, I've been watching you all week and you can play that part. Nope, can't play this song. Tried it. I said, well, I, I heard you play this exact drum beat earlier today. I said, how can you not play this song? She said, I don't know what about it. I just can't play the song. I said, okay, well, let's talk through this. What's the problem in the song? Well, it's fine until I get to the drum fill in between the first and the chorus. I said, oh, okay. I said, so other than that, do you play it pretty well? Yeah, other than that drum fill, but it all falls apart there. I said, so you can't play a drum fill, but you can play this song. You know, and we tend to make it this big, hairy lump of a problem, you know, this big hairball. And really, it's like, no, there's just, if we can smooth that drum fill out, you can actually play the entire song. So we did, and she played the whole song with, within that lesson. And I said, see, you can play the song. You just had one problem that we made into this big, gigantic, looming issue. And it reminds me of actually my senior recital. And I was, I was oddly enough, I had a snare drum and I had practiced for this dumb recital <laughs> forever, like three semesters. And my snare drum, I changed the drum head. I didn't have any money. So I spent the money to go get a drum head and I changed the drum. My snare sounded like crap. I mean, it sounded awful and I couldn't get it to sound good. I took it to some of the grad students. Like I couldn't get anyone to tell me what was going on with the snare drum. I had like, I had stopped eating. I was really all in my head. You know, it was going to ruin my whole and so finally, one day I was sitting in my house, and I said, well, hold on. And I took the drum head off and I laid it on the table and it was warped. The drum head was warped. So I took it back to the music. So I said, hey, this head drum head's warped. Got a new one, put it on there. It sounded like a million dollars. And the problem I had with my playing for two weeks had nothing to do with me. It had everything to do with this stupid drum head that I bought that had been shipped improperly, you know, and I had let it get inside my head and kind of sideline everything for a while. So uh, I, I very much feel the same with you is a lot of times it's, it's you know, you, your lead philosopher here helping them try to figure out where that stuck portion is. Yeah, well, you know, actually it. I have this, you know, this thing, you know, my famous quote. Oh, yeah. Break it oh, down yeah. or was it slow, slow it down, break it down so you can throw it down. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's you. You take that part of the tune or you take whatever you break it down. You got to break things down, slow mm -hmm. it down. Go slow at it and then build it up so you can throw it down. Mm -hmm. It works. Man, let me tell you, it works with everything. It works with, with tuning your drums, with practicing a piece of music, with learning a language, mm -hmm. anything. Slow it down, break it down so you can throw it down. Yeah. You know, that's, you, you know, you don't do the Ted Reed page all the way down the first time. You do a couple bars, mm -hmm. a couple bars, slow, you piece it together. Yep. And that it's, it and, and a lot of times it's a simple fact of, you know, they're trying to do two things at once. And we, as humans, we can't multitask. So when oh, you're trying wow. to read a sheet of music, you might be able to physically play those patterns, but your reading might be behind. And because your reading is behind and you can't read it in real time, the problem is actually not your drumming. The problem is you need to learn to read that sheet of music and play it at the same time, being able to read a sheet of yeah. music, is one thing being able to play the sheet of music is another being able to read it while you're playing is a completely different thing you know that's a skill man yeah that's a skill and that's where that's where discipline comes in you know we have to as humans we we understand things way before we can do them. Mm -hmm. that, that goes with anything we understand that's why we're such good armchair coaches mm -hmm. you know everybody thinks they know everything about football or baseball or whatever sport when you're sitting in your living room and you're watching, you go, why did he do that? You know, because we understand, we can understand things way before we can do them. Mm -hmm. So what it takes is, you know, when you say, okay, if you show me a pattern, go, oh, I understand that. Yeah, play a swing pattern here. You're going to play four on the floor, 
hi-hat on two and four, and then you're going to play this rhythm here. Oh, okay. I understand all that. I get it. But to actually do it takes practice mm -hmm. and discipline. And, uh, and that's why I call the metronome the ultimate discipliner. <laughs> because, because we always want to do things too fast. Everybody. There's not a human on this, on this planet that doesn't want to take something and go faster with it because we understand what it should be, but to actually control, control, you know, and teach our muscles to do what it's supposed to be the right way takes discipline. And if you use that metronome, start slow and just knock it up. You know, once you get it, knock it up a few beats per minute, a few more beats per minute till you get it. So that's the slow it down part. Mm -hmm. But that's what it takes, man. You, you got to have that discipline. And that's when a lot of people give up. People give up because they have this understanding, but they can't do it. Mm -hmm. you, know? you have yeah. to you have to do it over and over and over. You know, if you watch any sport, if you watch Roger Federer's backhand, you go, man, yeah, I, I, look how smooth I can do that. I can hit a backhand. No, you can't. And and he, you think he, you know, you don't think he hits a thousand tennis balls, you know. Yeah. a day just to to make sure that that those mechanics are still there you know mm -hmm. or to get there in the first place it That's, takes there's a good time. there's a good book that i read um i read all the time it was it's called grit and it's this lady that did this big study on world-class performers what was the thing that they all had that made them world-class you know what was that path what was that and she boiled it down to grit and it was this Rich. determination that they didn't quit. It was coupled with passion, with hard work, and they just, the tenacity to not quit. And she said, you know, if you look at this 10, 15 year span of this football player or musician or who, whatever it is, getting better, she said, if you look at every day, it's actually quite boring because every day it looks like they're doing a similar thing. And she said they would show up every day and do the next most logical thing whether that be in their practice time or what they're eating or whatever that looked like. And she said, and every day, each one of those next most logical things after 10 or 15 years, they look like Steph Curry, you know, and it looks like he's, you know, just sitting there reading a book while he's shooting three, three pointers. But yeah. he's, it's, she said those, those logical everyday steps build to this superhuman ability. Once you start stacking all those things on each other, but it's really just, the tenacity to stick it through. Everybody said, you know, how did you, you know, become a professional musician or get good at the drums? How did you, you know, I'm still trying to get good at the drums. So how did you build a career? And I said, well, I just didn't quit. You know, I just, I didn't quit. <laughs> you know, I yeah. kept doing it. And when I hit a roadblock, I go the other way and, you know. Yeah. Uh, and you can, you can find the quitters pretty easily. I mean, but it's, it's normal. Here's the thing is if you understand that, if you understand that concept, like I get it, it's just going to take this work to teach my muscles and my body to do this thing. It's going to take that kind of grit or discipline. If you understand that there's a, there's a, you feel better about it. You go, okay, I, okay. I, I'm, it's just going to take time. Mm -hmm. and you accept that fact and you do it. But you know, I got all these videos, like, especially talking about hobbyists and they're probably more susceptible to that sort of, failure, you know, and not knowing how to move on. Uh, you know, I, I do a lot of videos for Drumeo and uh, I see those comments and I see that's the kind of comments I go, well, don't don't stop. You know, they think if they watch the video, one of my videos one time that they're going to have it. And, mm -hmm. the, and I see a lot. Well, I can't do this. You know, I'm not I'm not getting this that that fast. I said, well, you're not ex I'm, I'm not a magician. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a teacher. I'm not a, magi I'm a magician. I'm a musician. So it's going to take time and you have to stop the practice and work up and work up and work up. And it might take, you know, they, they expect instant gratification. That's part mm -hmm. of our culture these days too. It's that instant gratification. This man, if he, that's what makes the great ones, the great ones, they understand that there's no such thing really. No, you gotta, it takes time. Yeah, I find myself, I, I, I feel like, you know, I tell people a lot, I say, well, well, I wish I had an easy button for this one. 
they'll say, hey, whenever I do that technique, I'm trying to do the, you know, whatever stroke, it maybe the free stroke, molar stroke, or your finger control, the stick's kind of bouncing sideways when I do that. I say, yeah, yeah, it'll do that. You got you to gotta keep, you got to keep trying. Well, why do you think that is? I don't think you've done it long enough. I don't think you had the muscle control. Well, how do I get that muscle control? You're going to need to do it some more, you know? Was there any other? There's no other secret. I'm sorry. I don't have. <laughs> You're going to need to perform that motion slower a lot more until you get control of the stick. And one day it won't go sideways anymore. And then you can move on to the next finger. <laughs> You know, it's like you're, uh, not, you're not you're not sarcastic at all, are you, Steven? No, not at all. You know, oh. not at all. I I don't what, you know. Be sarcastic. <laughs> what? I never would be. <laughs> well, so I got you know I got an interesting question for you because, especially over the last, and I try I tell people you know when I was coming up, my generation is a generation that had an analog childhood, but we had a digital teenage college years. And that wasn't, that's kind of a very specific subset of years. It was a, a three or four year period of, of mm -hmm. people that they enjoyed that analog, but all of a sudden the digital came along and it was incorporated into school and computers and all that stuff, mm -hmm. uh, college. And um, so I was in that group. And so when I tell people, look, the internet wasn't a huge thing when I was in high school, it had started coming around you know, dial up and all that stuff. When I got to college, we had computer labs. I remember Facebook being released to college. You know, our, our, we, we, our, our university finally got it, you know, and everybody jumped in and tried to register. And so I kind of came up um, in a very analog drumming world where I was getting Modern Drummer Magazine through the, through, the, through the mail. I was going to drum lessons and paying 40 to $50 a week to go to drum lessons. And that was my world. I'd get the Zildjian Magazine you know, and, and go through and circle the symbols I wanted. And, you know, um, and so I didn't have all this access to videos and incredible players. And, and I think in some ways, what a, what a huge resource that is to people now. But we also now have the other end of the spectrum problem, which is it's, it's too much. The internet is fantastic at giving us information. It's very bad at giving us plan for that information, at parsing that information down and helping mm -hmm. us focus on that. Um, but it's a great place to store that information, to know where it is, those types of things, to proliferate it. So as you've taught, because you said, what, 30-something years at the university, um, what, what, are, what are some of the changes that you've seen, maybe in the drumming community, maybe in drumming as a whole, maybe in people's approach to it? Are, are there any things that stick out to you? Oh, and yeah. they can be well, good or yeah. bad. They can be good or bad. Yeah, yeah. well, there's both. There's absolutely both. I mean, we're evolving. I mean, it's an evolution, sometimes a de-evolution. There's some, certain things I feel like we've done in the last, you know, 40, 50 years that are kind of backwards. But then there's other things that are amazing. For the most part, it's all for the good. Um, but there are, there are, there are a lot more uh, snakes in the grass that you got to be careful of that, that I didn't have to worry about. I mean, I didn't have to worry about getting hooked on, you know, skateboard videos on Instagram or something and, you know, mm -hmm. people doing stupid stuff and just watching these going down a rabbit hole doing that, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so I preach this all the time about distractions. But yeah, but but you realize, you know, my generation as, as well as a little bit of yours, you kind of came through it. We've seen so many changes in the last 50 years and what they say i saw mark cuban do something he says yeah the last this our generation i'm you know he's a little younger than me but our generation saw like amazing changes in technology that i mean it's it's unbelievable what from when i when i was a kid to now you know we're mm -hmm. the jetsons now we got mm -hmm. all that stuff that was on the jetsons you know i said I remember watching that what People can see each other when they talk to each other. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. That'll never happen. We do it. All, we do it every day. We're doing it right now. Mm -hmm. this, this, in fact, I'm unbelievable. This is amazing. You know, but yeah. most kids take this for granted. What? It's mm -hmm. a Zoom. It's a, you know, it's a Zoom interview. So I what? had I had Ronnie Tut on. Ronnie Tut is a uh, is uh, was he drummed for Elvis Presley for years. He was with Neil Diamond for. 30 mm -hmm. years, I think he said, Elvis for 12. Like, you know, he did the, he was on the Piano Man album. I, did, I found that out interviewing him, totally lost my cool. 
you know didn't realize right. he was on the piano yeah i was like chris farley on saturday night live you know he said remember, oh yeah remember. i was on the yeah and i was like Whoa, what was really? that like <laughs> you know like so stupid you know just oh, yeah. so dumb so stupid but stupid. he was he was in our room in our house uh where i had my studio at the time a 10 by 11 room and um he came in and he was completely blown away that we were able to be live streaming to students that and at that time we didn't do video calls they 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 were on a chat and we were broadcasting to them because that technology hadn't quite come when i first started live streaming and um and he said i remember doing the very first live stream with elvis presley we did uh, I think it was Elvis live in Hawaii. And he said, man, there were satellites like moving around the earth, trying to make sure everything was in line so that we could stream in real time this performance to TV. Yeah. And I said, oh, wow, you were on that concert. And he said, yeah. He said, so the fact that we can sit in this room together and talk to these people in real time and it's not a big deal, he said, it just blows my mind that we yeah. can do that. Yeah, um, technology is un unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Well, like what well, I was saying, Mark Cuban is saying, like, what's happened in the past 50 years is nothing compared to what's going to happen in the next 10 years mm -hmm. with AI and stuff, which is pretty scary. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to have time to adjust, you know. So mm -hmm. adjusting is one thing is getting my students to stay focused and to rid themselves of distractions, because I would say that's the biggest difference between my education in college and their education mm -hmm. is the amount of distractions that they have you know i mm -hmm. tell them right away i said if you have a playstation or xbox or anything in your dorm room get rid of it get it just get rid of it throw it away sell it s send it back home but get rid of it you, that's mm -hmm. just a distraction you don't need because you don't have time and they that you know some of them are like what it's like it's like, if I do that, it's like losing a family member or something, you know? It's mm -hmm. really, uh, it's, it's unbelievable how serious that can be. And then yeah. also, on their, if you have games on your phone, take them off. If you, you know, I don't, I don't want to see y'all scrolling through stuff. You know, if you are, it better be, you know, jazz videos or something. <laughs> so, and that, actually, so, and I know they're doing really good about it because they send me links or they talk about the things they saw or, or I hear them in the hallway. They're in the hallway outside my office and they're playing, and I can hear, they're playing videos like, man, did you see this guy? Oh my God, this vibe player or this drum, oh my God. And they're sharing videos. So that kind of stuff, if I go out there and they're, you know, playing a game or, or watching some stupid video. You, we, we can do that. It's just to keep it to a, a minimum. I mean, we can be yeah. entertained, but it's, you know, it's a, an amazing tool. You know, the, mm -hmm. the information, you can learn how to do just about anything on YouTube, but you have to be disciplined. If you don't have the discipline, you, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and and I was I was talking to Mark Dicciani one year at Do you know Mark um, up at the Philadelphia School of the Arts? Um, he, uh, he he was head of the School of the Arts, but he a uh, fantastic guy, and he and I have studied a lot on how the brain works and practice and all that stuff, and so we really got into a nerdy conversation. Matter of fact, our Zildjian and Tama were there taking us to dinner. They wound up getting so bored because we were talking about myelin and how the brain works uh, that they wound up just leaving. <laughs> It <laughs> just, you know, we're going to leave you two to talk. And so, but Mark, Mark said something really insightful. And he said, you know, people think to focus more, we need to try harder. If I just try harder, then I can focus more. And he said, but to focus more, you have to get better at ignoring and eliminating distractions. He said, mm -hmm. if you eliminate and ignore distractions, then what happens is you're able to naturally focus. And with my students a lot, I talk to them about, I say, look, we think of distractions only as this physical presence of something that's happening. I said, but there are external and internal distractions. So we have to become very, very disciplined about what is your practice killer? What's keeping you from practicing? Why did you get there 10 minutes late? And squashing those. And a lot of times it's like, oh, hold on, let me check email one more time. And so you check email right before you go into your practice time. And man, your boss sent you a real, man, that, that piece of trash. 
I'm going to. And so you go into your practice time writing yeah. an email. So now mm -hmm. you turned an external distraction into an internal distraction that you mm -hmm. carry into. And you would be better to just put the sticks down and go write the email and save it for tomorrow and then reread it and delete it because you don't want to send that email anyway. And, you know, like we have to be very good about protecting our practice time. And so airplane mode is my favorite thing at work. I, I did it right before we started this call. I said, hold on, I just got here. Let me just turn this off. And I tell Kelly, if you need me, call the phone. At the, we have a landline. And I say, call the phone at the studio. Grant will come get me if you need me. I just need to turn it off so I can focus some. And in our practice time, even when you take a break, don't go get on the phone because you're going to wind up mindlessly scrolling for 30 minutes longer than you meant to. Or you're yeah. going to see a video that you can't get out of your mind. And then as you go back into practice, you're distracted now. You know, yeah. we're better off to do something that's been proven to uh, restore our cognitive functions, our focus and stuff, which is uh, nature is 100 percent proven, even just looking at pictures of nature. Uh, so going for a, a five minute nature walk, physical activity has been proven. Reading fiction has been proven to restore the cognitive abilities of focus and all that. So I'm real big whenever you're practicing, you know. It's got its own place. It's a tool, but keep it on airplane mode. Don't check your email. Yeah. Don't check. Don't check Instagram. That's, don't check TikTok. That's great you know? words of advice. You know, and and uh, this reminds me. I had a student this a couple of years ago, I, and when I lecture my students about what exactly like I get if I give them that lecture that you just gave, I had a student says, "Well, that that's yeah, it's easy for you. You're disciplined." I'm like going, "What? <laughs> oh my god." Yeah. You don't know me. Yeah. I am not disciplined. That's something I have to struggle with every day. Every day I struggle. When I, in fact, when I talk about distractions, when I say you've got to get rid of I'm, I'm actually talking to myself. Mm -hmm. Dude, this thing, in fact, the doorbell just rang. So, and I got it on my phone. My doorbell's ringing. So now mm -hmm. I'm thinking about that. But this thing is a distraction in so many ways. I mean, mm -hmm. at night, I have I try to do it at 10 o'clock screens off mm -hmm. and I do read you know, reading fiction is great. Get your mind. Oh, I read fiction every you night before start, bed. You it creatively. Uh, when I'm working on my computer, I put my phone in the other room. Mm -hmm. And then so I do have my texts on the computer. So if my wife needs to get in touch with me, she'll text, she'll actually text me. But if I'm working on music. So getting rid of distractions is super important you're right and, but it's hard, and, it's hard to do it's not and, easy for anybody to no do. and i tell people i say you can practice this outside of your practice time because if it's a problem in your practice time it's probably a problem everywhere else yeah. you know and i said with, so with, the next time you're standing in line at starbucks and you mm -hmm. get that it's like this lizard brain we interrupt ourselves because we see that we're bored and our 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 brain is not being, it's not getting that dopamine hit of having something constantly coming new. And so we interrupt ourselves and we say, oh, check the phone. And I said, the next time you think that, don't check the phone. I said, yeah. just stand there and look around. Maybe talk to the person in front of you. Maybe yeah. just do anything except check that phone automatically because it is a good thing, but we have yeah. to you know, keep it in, yeah. in its place. Yeah. Our kids, we've never allowed phones at the dinner table. And if they want to see yeah. dad come unglued, which dad doesn't come unglued very often, but no. bring a phone to the dinner table, you know, yeah. and I will, I'll read you your right. I'll read your rights. And, um, Mike, we went out to eat and my daughter, she, she turned around to me and she said, dad, I said, yeah, she's six. Those kids have their phones at the table. And I said, well, that's okay. No, it's not okay. I said, okay. In our family, could you first don't talk so loud because I think they can hear you. But also, you know, it's fine if their family wants to do that. It's fine. But our family, we don't you know, we don't have the phones here because I'd rather spend time with you. But yeah, it, it's we've harped on that so much in the house that they think it's they think it's a bad thing. They think, yeah. <laughs> you know, that, um, but it, it really we really do have to, to learn to control those if we want to achieve the goals we want to achieve, which is you want to be a better musician. You want to be a better drummer. Yeah. And well, it's you know. Let me say this to the audience that's out there. Congratulations if you've made it this far. We're not talking to you. We're talking to all the people that we're talking to all the people that left 20 minutes ago <laughs> because there was an instant gratification. They couldn't stick with it and concentrate this long, which was probably 75 to 80 percent, if not more, of the people that started the video. This right? is very so, true. Right. So congratulations you're you you made it this far 
I, got, I have oh, a question for you. I hope you stick you. with us till the end. Yeah, yeah, I hope you stick with, with <laughs> these guys till the end. I, I have a question for you. I think you're a good person to ask this because you, you, you came up, for those of you that don't know uh, Dr. Wootner or his history, he's very big in the rudimental world. Um, uh, has, has, he's an incredible, his hands are incredible. Uh, he can do things with the sticks that I can't do. So um, <laughs> you can look up videos of him doing that. And um, the question, I guess, for you is, because I came up primarily as a drum set player. I was playing um, my first gigs by 15. Mm -hmm. And so the rudiments, while I knew about them, and while they were a very important part of, I think, the development of my hands, um, over the years, and it's just a discussion, you know, um, I, in your mind, for drum set players, should there be a different set of rudiments that are on the drum set because the drum set is a different instrument than the snare drum? Um, not are the rudiments still valid. I think they're still valid. I think we use those stickings all the time. But to, for instance, play your first song on the drum set, I do not need to play a paradiddle. I need to be able to play the money beat or I need to be able to play boots and cats or I need to have my coordination in between my kick drum and my snare drum. Um, and I've thought about this a long time, you know, it's kept me up at night way too often. Is there a different, you know, should there be a set of drum set rudiments that involve all four limbs? Um, I don't know. Again, discussion. I'm interested in your thoughts on that. Well, let's, let's, I, there's so much to talk about in this. First thing is, don't be scared to learn. Oh, no. You know, right away, I think most people say, well, I don't need that. That's a defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. So if you if you if you've already said the rudiments aren't important, you know I don't need that. Then then you feel better about not having to learn them. Mm -hmm. I think most people say that because they're scared. I mean, there are people I can see people. I ain't scared. Well, yeah, you might be. You mm -hmm. might be a little scared of learning something that you, you know that'll take time. And you think, well, this is going to take time away from this. Nothing's, you know, always be open about learning, you know, and then you have to decide what the best path for you. As far as the list of rudiments, I'm sure that if we started all over again, it would be a different list. If we just wipe the list out and said, hey, let's come up with some patterns that we use a lot mm -hmm. and let's, let's, let's give them a name, it would be a different list. In fact, like instead of paradiddle, the pattern I use more than a paradiddle is a, a diddle pair. You know, this pad with the starting with the second note of the paradiddle. I think that's way more valuable than a paradiddle. Mm -hmm. I use that way more. You know, it's just singles and doubles. We use mm -hmm. singles. So I think pair uh, learning a paradiddle is very important. Here's the problem: people think I learn the rudiment, and then what am I going to do with that rudiment? Mm -hmm. Well, you got to be creative and morph the rudiment. Now change it. Change the sticking. Well, no, well then it's no longer a paradiddle. Correct. But that's the that's why it's called a rudiment. It's rudimentary. Now we we morph it, we change the accent, change the sticking, we add a note, make it a quintuplet, do all sorts of things like this. So, I'm glad you brought that up cuz my book Rudimental Remedies, do you know this book? I, yeah. I do know this, but I still, yeah, hey, well, for all of you, I still work out of his book, the, uh, uh, the rudimental reference book. Is that yeah, my cover? Rudimental reference my, book. My, co my cover got torn off years ago from working. So I, I don't, I, I'm like, I think that's the name because <laughs> I haven't seen the cover in so long. Um, I still work out of that book. It's an incredible yeah. book. And you've got well, a few book, more. So. Right. so rudimental remedies, I have it right in front of me. It has play along tracks. It's a lot more fun than the, then I actually have both books. Can we plug that? So that's oh, that's yeah. the book you were that's the book you were talking about. That's, that's the what one the I cover got... looks like, by the way, Stephen. Like yeah, that. that's that. My cover doesn't look like <laughs> my cover is the first page. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have the yeah. And this it's about to be the second first, page because that page is This is not my first copy. Up. Yeah. And then the other one I was talking about is this one, with the handsome picture on the front with the mm -hmm, dated mm -hmm. leather coat. Hey man, that's, look. That's a that's a roll offs guy's idea. But that has tracks, but the, throughout that book is, you know, I take paradiddles and I do them in different time signatures and, you know, show how you can move the paradiddle around. 
use it in different ways, not just paradiddle, parad, you know, but all sorts of different syncopations with the paradiddle, blah, 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 changing the accent, all that sort of thing. And so my one of my one of my um, hopes or you know, agendas hit it's like a hidden agenda in this book is to sh is for people to be, oh, you can do that with it. Well, if you can do that, maybe you could do this. It's to it's to help your creativity and, and discover other ways and how to do it on drum set. You know, I do a, a, like a whole series of videos for Drumio on drum set, you know, applying each and every of the 40 PAS rudiments to drum set, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's not. And, and here's the thing. What I learned by doing those videos, I learned a lot actually doing those videos in the fact that I never I shouldn't say never. I hardly ever think about, hey, how can I apply this rudiment to drum set? Like, let me put a rudiment in this fill. That mm -hmm. doesn't enter my mind. It's just part of my vocabulary. If I do use rudiments, it's because that's my vocabulary. It's just like speaking. If you know a lot of words, you can speak a little more intelligently than somebody that knows very little uh, language or very, you know, has a small vocabulary. So if you have a larger vocabulary, I think uh, on drum set, you can speak more intelligently. You can do a lot more because there's a lot of styles out there other than what you hear on the radio or pop music in the United States. There's so many, so many things that are going to help you. So that's one thing. You, if you work on your rudiments, you're going to have a larger vocabulary. You just have to keep using them and then figure out ways. And if you listen to drummers like, say, Steve Gadd, uh, Vinny Kaliuta, David Garibaldi, three of my favorites, you realize these guys are all amazingly advanced rudimental drummers mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of their vocabulary. If you listen to their vocabulary, you realize these guys know their shit about about rudiments. I was just talking to uh, Grant, for anybody that doesn't, Grant's uh, our community manager at SDS and he's a, a great drummer himself and edits all the videos and uh, we were just talking about this because we just did a video on Steve Gadd and um, and I told him, I said, first of all, I hate, I still hate him a lot because he's really good and um, <laughs> and I'm, st I'm trying to get over that. But secondly, uh, we did a video on Vinny, and I didn't drum for a whole week. Vinny just really pissed me off. Okay. He's very, very good. And, um, and, I, and I try to only listen to him when I'm in a certain headset because he's so good. <laughs> but um, so good. Steve Gadd, you know, I was like, oh, these fast licks he's doing in between his hi-hat and his snare drum, man. Some of them he'll like, he just puts a kick on the front of a paradiddle and then puts another kick on the end of the paradiddle. Now it's a six-note sticking. That's a very easy, or he... It's a double paradiddle and you put a kick on the front and the end of it or two kicks on mm -hmm. the end of it. Or, yeah. And I'm like, all these combinations he's doing very quickly are he just added or took a kick away. Now, I'm simplifying it, right? I mean, obviously. No, no, on, you're on not. Basic, you're, that's pretty much it. On a Same basic thing with level. Same you know, Yeah. He, and, and, he, plays, and, he plays a snot out of Rademacuse, but adds a bass drum in it. Yeah. And it, it just breaks it down. It's like, oh, wow. So he took, you know, you take something you know really well. And then you just add a little something else to it. You do the next most logical thing. And you're yeah. like, what if I added a kick drum to the front and the back of it and made it, you know, uh, a six note sticking in front, instead of a four note, an eight note sticking. And then you displace that and, you, you know, um, but when you take these players that seem superhuman, like we were talking about earlier, they just did the next most logical thing. What if I added yeah. a kick drum to a Rademacue, you know, yeah. what, what would that be like? Yeah, so that's 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 directly applying rudiments to the drum set, which which you could do. I mean, we can do that. You, but you may never ever do that. However, the technique that we use to play rudiments is going to help our our playing. Like if say, let's take paradiddles. You mm -hmm. know, if you're practicing and you're practicing the downstroke. Because if I teach you a paradiddle, I go downstroke, upstroke, tap, tap, downstroke, upstroke, tap, tap. And to get this technique, to get a good downstroke, right, and a smooth upstroke, this takes practice. You need to go slow. We're breaking it down. We're slowing it down so we can throw it down. And then when I go to drum set and you listen, say, say you listen to Funk Grooves by Jabo Starks or 
or Dave Garibaldi or any great funk drummer or any good Latin drummer and you listen to all those ghost notes, that's the technique. You got to have that technique. You, you don't think they didn't practice those downstrokes and smooth upstrokes at a very slow tempo, you know, at some point or still. I have I have pros, you know, call me up to to work on to work on skills like that. Uh, one recently, Marvin Smitty Smith called me. I said, because I need a lesson. Uh, who else called me? Uh, Walfredo Rios Jr. said, I need a lesson. I'm going, you guys are, you, you play for Chicago. Yeah. You got a gig. <laughs> he goes, no, man. He goes, I, I'm just, as I get older, I realize techniques breaking down. I got I to gotta refocus on this stuff. So if those guys got to refocus on it. So don't think, uh, I don't need no rudiments. I mean, man, the pros are going all of them they know they have to focus on the it's the technique whether you use those rudiments or not if you learn how to play an inverted paradiddle like really well you know with that upstroke downstroke upstroke you know where then when you get on hi-hat when you have that 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 i don't want to do it because my all my mics are up but you know uh, Pick up different size sticks. I'll do it like this. If you're, you know, p playing ghost notes and an accent, that's all mm -hmm. from an inverted paradiddle. It's yeah. that motion. It's the same motion that you worked on here. Right. For some reason, your, your audio to your drum set's not working. That's because I don't have, we're on Zoom. Okay, now. Oh. There it is, hey! Okay, there so it now, is. Hang on, let me turn this off. So, so let me do this. Inverted, inverted flam, I bet I'm gonna destroy my ears there. Hang on. Inverted flam taps. So how how often do you use or just or just? Mm -hmm. Sorry, that was probably loud with my lapel mic on. Um, you know, for any groove, just that alone. How many people play this? Everybody plays that. Mm -hmm. That is downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke. And if you practice inverted flam taps, you're gonna have that down so well and so clean that when you go to play that groove, it's money. Yeah, and the same thing as, you know, when, when, when you're practicing alternating flams, you know, yeah. all it is is a down and an up because it's a down and then you're coming up. You know, the down is the primary note, the up is the grace note, and each hand is playing that. And if you, if you break that down, for me, there's been several rudiments. Uh, the paradiddle, for instance, is really just a, 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 it's a, a, Klaus Hessler taught me this. It's the same motion as a molar three stroke, alternating molar three stroke, and then you add a diddle in there, but it's making that same type of a motion. And once you can connect that motion of those three notes inter intertwined, it comes very easily. Same thing with a Swiss yeah. Army triplet. They're double strokes. Yeah. Each hand is playing a double stroke, but they're, inter, they're interlaced double strokes, right? They're laid over the top of each other. And as you were saying, inverted flam taps or, or uh, alternating flams, it's just a down-up motion. Um, yeah. and, and so if you can break those down to their individual stickings, it really uh, helps you, you the components. You mentioned Klaus Hessler. I love that guy. Oh, man, he's we're, we're trying to talk. We just geek out. I just realized, you know, we can talk for a long time and then realize, you know, nobody cares what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, we just yeah. geek out over stuff like this. We're trying yeah. to we're trying to get him over here to do a uh, one of his weekend retreats uh, at oh, our yeah. studios. And I told him, I said, you know, if you come here, you're only a couple hours from Dr. John Wooten, and I'm, yeah. I have a feeling he's going to want to talk to you. So yeah, <laughs> you well, should probably. We... Yeah, if you give me some warning, because yeah, I, 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 we would ne definitely need to get together. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're 
you know, we're talking to him and Annika, and we don't know if it'll work out, but it seems like it's going to work out. So fingers crossed. Um, okay, back back to flams. You were saying flams. Yes. Double stroke rolls and Swiss Army triplets. Mm -hmm. That's a great. I mean, you people should. Pre it's the same. They're all the same thing, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's just different spacings. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you a drill you can do just to morph from one to the other, go from flams to Swiss Army triplets to double stroke rolls, just by changing the spacing and the intensity of the, of the notes. But with all those things we were talking about, if you can do that, that con the control to do that sort of thing, to do these rudiments, oh my God. The, I mean, to have that sort of control and that command, then to do whatever you want on the drum set. I mean, you can apply that, you know, I, I think application of these things isn't, it's, it's not that they're applicable. If there's a problem with them being applicable, it's a, it's a problem with your imagination. Mm -hmm. Just figuring out how to do it. But take fl flams. Let me do this real quick. Flams, Swiss triplets, rolls, back to Swiss triplets, back to flams. Break that, break that down a little slower so that, so that everybody can see exactly what the sticking is that's happening. Okay, it's the same sticking. It's right, right, left, left. Uh, with the, let me get my pad. Hang on. So I can, here, let me, I'll use some bigger sticks. On the pad, by the way, I usually use marching sticks or larger sticks um, just for the rebound. I mean... I got a whole theory about that. I think you should use larger sticks when you use a pad. You can you and then graduate to and then move on to smaller sticks. But to, when you work on this stuff, it's good to use a larger stick, whether it be a marching stick or just slightly larger drum set stick. Anyway, flams. So if you're playing a flam, and now we get faster, I'm actually kind of bouncing. I'm bouncing it. So if I go to Swiss triplets, man, that's hard to do slow. It's the same thing, but now Swiss triplets. I lower my left hand because I'm playing them on the right. I could do it the other way. If I open that up, I have double stroke rolls. So a flam is like da 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 da. It's like an uneven roll. If I if I open that flam up, it becomes a double stroke roll. These are really wide flams, if you want to call them that, or a double stroke roll. If I open one hand up and keep the other one closed, then I have a Swiss Charmy triplet. And I can open that flam up a lot. Or close it. Keep the left hand low. Speed it up. It's just a spacing, you're just different spacings of your hands, but it's all the same sticking, you know, so try it, try it, just, just play with it and, you know, mess it up. It's really just kind of like messing it up. Yeah, it really is. And it, and so much of drumming comes down to, it's just singles and doubles, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's much just, of it is. yeah. And, and variations of those. So, well, man, I don't want to keep you all day. I know you, I know you got other things to do. But I, I, I really do appreciate you 
you're taking the time. Yeah. And before we get yeah. out of here, where, so where can everybody where can everybody find you, and what companies um, do do we do we need to to um, highlight? Okay, let me get to that in a second. But let me tell you first, what I do most these days isn't this. It's playing steel pans, mm -hmm. you know, which we didn't talk about at all. But you know, playing. In fact, I just wrote I just wrote a suite for a steel pan and orchestra, and I'm going to be playing it this summer in Argentina and in Brazil. It's three movements: the cha cha, a bolero, and a bimbe. And actually, two of those are lessons on my website: the uh, cha cha and the bimbe. I'll get the. I just wrote the bolero. I just finished it. But uh, I play steel pans, and if you would, you, you can check me out on YouTube, my YouTube channel, John Wooten. Just look up John Wooten, or this our Southern Miss. So Mispo is the name of the our band. It stands for uh, uh, Southern Miss Steel Pan Orchestra. So Mispo, um, and the, and there's some great there's great drumming in there. You know, I wish I could play everything. You know, that's the, that's the the one thing I wish I could do is do everything. But I'm now. Now I hire drummers more than I play drums mm -hmm. because I'm usually playing pans and I sing too. So, uh, but so now I'm, I'm, I usually have drummers play for me. And, uh, and well, you know, and I, I think that's another thing to become okay with is your evolution as a musician, because I tell people I am a drummer, but first and foremost, I'm a musician. And the way I that I get that to all, interact all the time. Yeah. The way I get to interact with music, is the drums. And if tomorrow yeah. the drums went away, I would find another way to interact with music because I, I'm a musician and I do what musicians do and I play music. I think about music. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, I think part of being a musician is learning that, you know, you're a drummer, you play the drums, and then being okay with your evolution as a musician. And yeah. one day you may wake up and go, you know what, I don't think the drums are enough. I think something else has to come in here yeah. Because I, I need, I have another musical thing that needs to happen. But if you don't open yourself to learning the steel pan or open yourself to learning marimba or maybe piano or guitar, whatever that may be, yeah. you don't ever get to fulfill those things because you're in the headspace of I'm a drummer. I'm only a drummer, you know. And to me, I'm like, no, you're a musician. So it's okay to go over there. It, the same thing as a piano. It's just a, it's a percussive instrument. You can play that. It's fine. Just figure yeah. out the notes, you know. Yeah, okay. um, if you look on the other side of my cameras, I got a vibraphone. I know you've been playing some vibes. Lately. Oh yeah, I got it in the in the next room. Yeah, I got a piano. I got a whole shelf of drums, different rope drums, to, my congas, uh, cajon, panderos. I got all kinds of stuff behind the cameras. But you're right, and and also I think it's it would make you a better musician. Again, so I don't need to learn to play piano. I'm a drummer. So you know. If, I love, first of all, I love sitting down at the piano late at night. That's one thing I do is when I say screens off, I go to the piano and I just play. And I might compose. I might just, I might just play. I just might, might play some of my favorite Joe Beam tunes, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, I just like to play. Am I good? Probably not. I mean, th th that doesn't matter. I enjoy doing it and mm -hmm. I enjoy playing it. So that's, that's one thing is like, a hang up. I think mainly it's a in the United States. You know, I, I you see that. I, I love to see stuff like you teaching and whatever drumio and the stuff I do online, which we'll talk about in a minute. But uh, I love seeing people get back to it later in life because I think that's what music's for. It's a communal activity. You should enjoy what you do. You always want to get better, but but you don't have to be the best. You don't have to be better than so and so. What you do is fine. If you enjoy it and it, fu it fuels your soul, that's, that's enough, you know? And when I play piano, this is just that. Am I a, a good piano player? No. I, I, you know, the more I play, the better I get, but, you know, I'm never going to concertize on piano. Mm -hmm. So with that said, don't be scared to learn. It's the same thing with the rudiments. Don't use that as a, you know, that's stupid. I don't need to know that. I don't, or I don't have time for that. Yeah, yeah you, you probably don't have time not to. You would understand forms of tune. You know, one thing I always complain about the drummers, the drummers never play the bridge. It's my complaint about students. Play the bridge. They go, what are you talking about? I said, the bridge. You're playing the same groove as the A section. 
everybody changed. The piano player changed textures. They changed keys. Oh my God. The melody got busier. Everything changed. Everybody in the band changed on the bridge. You kept playing the same thing mm -hmm. because you don't understand form. Mm -hmm. You got to change on the bridge. So that's like one example. Yeah. But, uh, well, for, uh, well uh, being forced to learn, um, you know, piano, you have to pass piano proficiency. I had to learn marimba and vibraphone when I was in college. And um, it really made me aware of the energy within a song. That's how I think of a song now. Where is the energy? Where is it going? You know, is dissonance is a different kind of energy. Are we coming away from that energy? Are we going to it? Are we building? You know, I'm, I'm constantly thinking in terms of like, what's the energy? How, how are we? And, and so for me, you know, a bridge, it's like, okay, that's a different energy. Like we gotta, mm -hmm. we gotta do something there. We're on a chorus. Yeah. Like this is an yeah. energy, you know? Um, so it, it makes, but it makes you aware of those things. It makes learning a tonal instrument helps you exactly. hear those things and hear yeah, that makes transition. You better, makes you a better drummer for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So anyway, there's that. Okay. So my, my stuff online is johnwooten.com and it's all O's just like the river. All O's. Mm -hmm. Let's ask what river. <laughs> what river? What river? <laughs> I always say that. I always good. People go, Oh, like the river. I'm going, what river are you? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> no, rivers. So it's funny. Or they, they go, Ah, oh, I get it. Yeah, there's no river with O. That's exactly, but you're going to remember how to spell it. There's no yeah. E, like Victor Wooten, who's my brother from another mother, uh -huh. different spelling. However, I did find Wooten River. Really? Wooten River on the Isle of Wight in England. Really? I did, a, I did a clinic at the Symposium of International Rudimental Drummers in Portsmouth, England last year. And I was looking on the map, and right across, you can take a ferry to the Isle of Wight. And there's a Wooten village and then a, wow. with, a, with all O's. And I said, what? And so I knew my dad, his ancestors, I knew the name was English. So I mm -hmm. knew it was an English name, even though I'm mostly French from Louisiana. But so I went and I went over there and I visited. So I found Wooten River. All, so That's now hilarious. I can say, like the river. <laughs> like the river. <laughs> like, the, like that river. There's actually a river. And there's a Wooten village, <laughs> Wooten River. In the Isle of Wight. And, uh, but, so johnwooten.com, I have the Woody Mental Academy. You get it? Woody, Woody I, 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 I see what you did there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, uh, and, and most everybody in there, there are some serious players, but most, there's a lot of hobbyists in there. You know, I get a lot of people from drum that want to go study deeper than what's, than, than what I have on Drumio and get into. I, I teach a master class every Saturday. Uh, that I'm here, that I'm home, and uh, for all the people that are members. And, and then, of course, my Facebook or Instagram. Instagram is John A. Wooten because John Wooten was taken, so I had to put my middle initial. And then, uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. But check out my website, johnwooten.com. There's a, all, my, all my compositions. Uh, I mean, not all of them. I haven't updated it. I need to get some of the newer ones on there, but... Um, all the drumline stuff, the, uh, I have tons of drumline street beats and, you know, as you probably remember, you've oh, played, yeah. a lot of, played a lot of those. And, uh, and all my books are published through Roloff Productions, out of, mm -hmm. right down the road from you. Um, so in, any of those places, Vic, if you haven't seen the rudiment videos on VicFirth.com, that, vi that website's just amazing. Yeah, it's that a Mark huge Wessels. resource. It's a huge resource. And then, uh, of course, on PAS as well, and then Drumio. But, uh, all right. Very nice. You, know, you can find me. Summer drumming, we do so. We, it's, a, it's mostly for high school, college students, but anybody can come. We get, we get some adults there, but it's a rudimental drum camp mm -hmm. in June, first week of June, first full and week I, of June. I did that a couple of years. Uh, I think I was like actually a counselor there. I don't know that I was ever a, uh, I don't know that I ever attended one. Yeah. Um, but I think I was a counselor one year. Yeah. So yeah, those are those are. Um, I'm sure you were. I probably put put you to work. Yeah, I had to catch some kids that snuck out of their dorms, and I felt like a real jerk because I'm like, yeah. guys, the only thing you can't do is sneak out of the dorms. Please don't make me be that guy yeah. that calls Dr. Wooten and you have to go home. And sure enough, man, 
And I, re I, I remember driving up beside him on campus, and I said, I rolled down the window, I said, why, why did you do this, you know? <laughs> get in the car, get in the car. Yeah. And they said, what? I said, well, now we got to call, call the doc, and it's not going to be good, so it's not going to be good. <laughs> well, how's the guy? I said, just get the car. <laughs> You know, I said, yeah, I'm, I'm eight. It's a good, it's a good camp when I don't get any phone calls at home <laughs> in the middle of the night. Yeah. There's been some bad ones. No but doubt. There's been well, some man, great I ones. There's been, there's been camps I don't get any phone calls. Like everything's perfect. It's like, that's man, the best that ones. Great. That's the, that's best, the best ones. ones. Yeah. Oh man, I, I appreciate you taking the time and um, I'll be in your area here in the next month or so. So hopefully that's we'll right. be able you to come uh, and do some gigs. I know I'm in and out, so I'm going to, we have to plan it. Yeah, I'll hit you up. I think we said May was the one, so I'll hit you up before that one. I think you've yeah. got a day or two there, so I'll hit you up. And we'll grab dinner or something. And, um, yeah, absolutely. And well, Stephen, man, I'm look. I'm super proud of what you're doing. I, I hope you don't that. mind. I tell everybody, you know, you're one of my one of my kids. <laughs> you, you know, I appreciate that. It's it's the, all like I said. All you guys are there's, there's so many people out there doing amazing. I, First of all, with, with, with students like you, you know, I, I look at you and I'm, first of all, I, I'm proud of you. And, and, in, and in many ways, I'm envious. It's like, you're doing so, so well. It's like, God, how's he, he's killing it, man. It's like, <laughs> you know, and, and, I, and I would love to know what it's like to go on the road, even though we talked about that prior to the interview. We talked about a lot of personal, you know, things that we got out that y'all would not be interested in, you know. But, <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's uh, incredible what you're doing. Incredible. And I, I, you know, I got to visit your studio. If y'all haven't been to his, stu it's, I mean, you can tell it's beautiful, but that's just a, a piece of it. It's just, and you did all that work. God, it's incredible. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate Congratulations. it. Congratulations. Thank you. It's, it's, uh, it's fun to look at it and look back at, you know, the journey. And it's just one, it's just, it's just like drumming. It's one step at a time. And yeah. You know, and then uh, enjoying each phase of it, I think, which I'm trying to learn to do. So well, I appreciate that's, the time. That's, a, that's important. Enjoy the journey. It is. It is. Enjoy there's not. The there's no destination. We're not going to arrive. No it's just going to be a new port. Always take it. And if you're expecting that 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 performance to be your destination, you're going to be very disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. And it's you know, I didn't I don't ever want to relive the glory days. I want to just move on to the next the next good right. one you know exactly. and um so man well i appreciate you taking the time it means a ton and um i know this will help a lot of people so I we will so. uh we will talk soon okay man all right see ya see you later